guys, I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication, and you guys should definitely make sure you're catching the Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show. We have a great guest for you today on the Maurice Brown Show. He is the founder of the International Christian Film Festival, uh, and he's extremely talented. He's a producer. He's a visionary. He's produced and directed over a thousand TV shows, documentaries, and films, which has been viewed all over the world. And he has also produced Don't Say My Name, with my good friend Brooklyn Whitmer in 2022. Maddie, the discovery that's got Cameron Arnett. And uh, he'll correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Karen Abercrombie is a part of that 2018. And daddy, we're back in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Marty Jean Louis. What's up, Marty? How are you? How are you, sir? Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. Man, I, I tell you, I, I appreciate you being on the show. Now, was I right about Karen Abercrombie being a part of that film, Maddie, with uh, Cameron Arnett? No, this is incorrect. Uh, so yes. uh, I did work with Miss um, Abercrombie on my last movie, Break the Cycle, uh, okay. which we'll see, we'll, which we'll watch at ICFF. So, uh, great actress, by the way, who starred in yes. War Room. Uh, but I, we've got the International Christian Film Festival coming up this May in Orlando, Florida. And by the way, folks, if you haven't got your tickets yet, you can get them. I believe you can go to, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I believe internationalchristianfilmfestival.org. Is that correct? That is also false. false <laughs> Internationalcff.com. Uh, Internationalcff.com. Awesome. And that's going to be in Orlando, Florida, and that's going to be May 3 through the sixth. This is the 11th consecutive year of ICFF. And this is a great festival for faith-based entertainers to be a part of. It's growing year by year, getting bigger and bigger. And Marty, you started that. I don't want to start off with what, what led you to take on such a huge undertaking? Well, you know, it can only be God. And to be honest, I, I did not want to be a part of that, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I, I knew how much work it would take. And at, at the time I was producing TV shows. So I was already busy as it is. So I didn't think that I had the capacity, the gas <laughs> to take yeah. on anything else. Uh, so I, I, I fought God for uh, two years before I surrendered. Well, thank God you did and that you hoisted up the white flag, Marty, because it is an awesome experience. This is something, and I, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the inner workings of ICFF a little bit later on in our conversation. But I want to bring up the fact that you obviously are an African-American filmmaker, producer, and director. And you, we, we know it's not easy for African-Americans and people of color to flourish <laughs> in this industry and initially you were actually kind of dissuaded or discouraged uh in the beginning tell us a little bit about that sure for that for that very reason um you know i originally went to school to study films and you know someone told me and, and i don't want to look at it as a racism kind of thing said look you know look at all the famous directors, uh, actors, and producers, and writers, they're yes. all white. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. what's, what's your chance of success in Hollywood? And I yeah. thought about it, and I, and I switched my major afterwards. And when you look at some of the top African-American directors that are in the game today, I mean, my gosh, you can look at people like uh, Spike Lee, uh, Jordan Peele, Ava DuVernay, uh, and others. And, and, and they've kind of revolutionized the film industry, if you will, particularly Spike Lee. And if you look at Jordan Peele right now, he's kind of forging his own path of revolutionizing the industry. And uh, how do you see the future? Uh, for African-American filmmakers? 
So I want to add two names to that list okay. um, that have paved the way for us. Um, yes. I want to add uh, Sydney Poitier. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, and I also want to add Tyler Perry. Uh, whether ah. you're a fan or not of these guys, um, they have paved the way for us African-Americans. They've opened, knocked down doors uh, and it wasn't easy for them. And, yeah. Uh, but because of their effort, it helped us, uh, and it's and it's gotten a lot easier. Uh, not easy, but it's it's gotten better uh, because because of their efforts, because of uh, what they went through. Yes. Um, so I think that there are a lot more African Americans uh, that are directors, uh, that are producers, that are um writers that we now know you mentioned one of them including you know i'll add denzel washington to that yes, list um, as well uh so these guys opened the door so that we could do that uh yeah. so you see a lot of respected african-american films like for example creed 3 you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is part of the Rocky franchise. Yes. Um, African-American lead and director. Uh, so we see that more and more. And I hope that we see that more and more. We are not less talented. Who was? OK, so did Michael B. Jordan also direct Creed? Yes, he did. Well, I did not know that. I yeah. did not know that. I know I knew that he was in heavy association with Sylvester Stallone in the Creed franchise. Uh, but I didn't know he had directed that as well. That is awesome. And I'm glad that you mentioned Tyler Perry. And what was the other director's name you mentioned along with Tyler? Well, I, I mentioned Denzel Washington, who also directs uh, now. Yeah. Uh, I also mentioned Sidney Poitier uh, as, yeah. a, you know, uh, yeah. as a pioneer. And he's he's really the trailblazer, uh, Sidney Poitier. Yes. I, I, yes. I guess out of sight, out of mind. I had not. Uh, I I feel bad that I mentioned. I did not mention Sidney Poitier. You kind of mentioned Sidney Poitier too. My 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 goods. I feel bad about that. Hey Brooklyn, how are you? Uh, Brooklyn uh, Whitmer, who is your star in Don't Say My Day. Brooklyn, always good to hear from you. But no, I I I wanted to go back to Tyler Perry though, real quick, because Tyler Perry for me, and this is just my personal call on this. Whenever I see a film by Tyler Perry, I'm I'm very entertained, <laughs> and I I I know he takes an unconventional, <laughs> an unconventional approach to getting to God, but to me he gets there, and I I find it, you know, very entertaining. I uh, but there are a lot of people, however, in the faith based community, particularly the African American faith based community, that don't quite look at Tyler. As a faith-based guy, what's your opinion of that? As a as a faith-based filmmaker, yes. Oh, uh, he's definitely not a faith-based filmmaker, in my view. Okay, uh, I think Tyler Perry <laughs> um, goes after entertainment. Yeah. Uh, in in general. Yeah. And within that, you see some sprinkles of faith in in his movies. But I, I wouldn't uh, put him as a faith-based director, writer, you know, um, producer, an actor. Um, some of his films, I, I, I couldn't screen at ICFF. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Dude, I, I I understand that. If we, I'm going to ask you about another film a little bit later on, that's sort of the same boat, maybe maybe in a uh, the same boat. But that being said, I, again, I I, <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out because he does get to God. He has his own way of kind of getting there, and I do yeah. mean his own way. But I do find it entertaining, and I, I just kind of wanted to get your opinion on that. But nonetheless, another African American filmmaker out there that's done quite well. I want to. Um, change gears and go to uh, your experience in the faith-based world as a director and, and provider of uh, faith-based activity. What was the tipping point for you? Uh, because I know that there was a 
time in your life, Marty, where you really weren't sure that you were going to go faith based uh, or into the Christian world of filmmaking, per se, as it were? What was the tipping point for you that decided that you, you would go for the faith based world? I think I think God pushed me there. Um, my goal wasn't to create um, when I was going to school uh, and I was determined to go to Hollywood. Yes. And I think God knew that I would end up there and I would end up being very successful, but not for him. <laughs> okay. Yes. If that yes. makes sense. That makes sense. So that makes sense. God, God changed the path for me so that I wouldn't go that route because he saw, I think, what what would have been oh absolutely. <laughs> you know absolutely absolutely well i mean the, you know the hollywood is vicious dude it, it is absolutely vicious and there are not a lot of people within the christian community that can veer over into that lane although we do have some and they do quite well but you you got to be prayed up you got to be a warrior bro in christ to go into that world and come out unscathed as it were it's vicious stuff and not everyone can do that uh, so I, I I totally understand and 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 get that because it's it and 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 it's not a game and they play for keeps, Marty. <laughs> they play for keeps, and all of a sudden you've lost your life, you've lost your family, the whole nine years, everything's on the line. But I do believe there's yeah. a place for it because you got I I call it being a Navy SEAL warrior in the Army of God for those of us that do get over there because there's some people in there that need to be rescued. Yeah, so I've, I've heard a lot of people say that I'm going to Hollywood, you know, to change yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Good luck. Um, <laughs> first, <laughs> right. first of all, first of all, you can't change Hollywood. You can't change anyone. Right. Yeah. And second of all, you have to be called. Yes. To go there. Um, because if God calls you, he will equip you with all that you need. Uh, and even then, you will not be able to change anybody, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit has to do that. That's just the bottom line, Marty. It's it's the Holy Spirit that, that calls. Because a lot of times we go, gun-ho, I'm going to go change the world. And that's a great right. feeling to have. But you gotta yes. be Holy Spirit led. You can't be flesh led into yes. that. God bless you for yeah. want the, the want to part of it, but you gotta be Holy Spirit led, and that's the only way you can survive in that culture. Um, so you know, we got the, the, the festival coming up. This is going to be the 11th year of ICFF and the biggest Christian film festival in the world. How far, Marty, in your mind, can the festival go? And is it realistic that it could be a Christian version of the Oscars? So thank you for that question. Um, you know, all those things, numbers, doesn't matter to me, um, yes. to be completely honest. Um, okay. If we had 10 people at the festival... I care more about souls than I care about numbers, Amen. right? Numbers, you can have 10,000 people at ICFF. Sure, we can celebrate. But what have we accomplished with these 10,000 folks that attends? Yes. Right? So that matters more to me than the actual number. You can have five people that does more damage, you know, and the enemy's camp then you yeah. have 10,000. So I care more about that than I care about numbers or, you know, reaching the level of the Oscars. That does not matter to me at all. And that answer is why it will become the Christian version of the Oscars. That answer you just <laughs> gave right there. It doesn't shed anything but pure, unadulterated humility. And that's the kind of warrior that God's looking for. You know, that the pride thing is so easy in our business 
to to seep over into spiritually like oh yeah everybody likes me everybody loves me people think i'm funny people think I'm whatever and if you're not guarding your spirit you can end up becoming prideful and we all know that comes just before a fall so you you're being right. very humble about it and, and that's exactly what god wants that's why it's going to blow up that's why it's going to explode and it's getting better every year and more and more people are being attracted to it i think even the secular world is aware of what you're doing and what happens every year down there and in orlando florida and so yeah i i i love what you said and i i personally can see that it's growing to that level I'm, and i'm so thankful we need it so badly in the christian world at the end of the day it's about getting souls saved and and that's what you're in this business for, and that's what we're all in this business for, to get right. lost souls saved. Um, is there anything, Marty, oh, first of all, tell us a little bit about the itinerary this year for ICFF. Well, it's 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 the same <laughs> per se. Yeah. So there, there's nothing, there's nothing different about how we're doing things with the exception of the different speakers that are attending. So we have the ICFF Academy uh, Monday and Thursday, which it's just hardcore film, um, like film school for two days. You okay. know, you learn from the best in the industry. Uh, you have the music session that's going on at the same time. Our uh, best uh, performing artist gets to perform. That's so cool. Um, we have a concert Wednesday uh, night at eight. Um, Thursday night, we have the uh, opening night party, the meet and greet party. And then we have this special movie that we get to watch before it goes in theaters Thursday night. And then more of the same on Friday, you know, you got seminars, you have movies, you have fellowship, you, you know it, um, you know, we have the prayer room that's constantly going yes, all the time, <laughs> you know, uh, and then Saturday we have uh, the two award ceremonies, the red carpet, the VIP dinner, and then, yeah. and then we have the after party, you know, when it's all said and done, we all get to have a little fun, you know, like they say, yeah. let your hair down and just have a little fun. That's right. And and unfortunately, I don't have much to let down anymore, but I'm going to be there, Marty. I'm going to be there. There's no doubt about well, that. That, mean, that means that you've already let your hair down. You're already having fun. <laughs> yes, which, which indicates I may have gotten carried away. But that being said, Marty, I'm going to be there. No doubt about it, dude. It's going to be tons of fun. Uh, I want to switch gears and ask you about just the faith-based world in general, the filmmaking world. And, and my question to you is, have you seen or do you think there's anything that you'd like to see done differently in faith-based filmmaking or even improved upon? Oh, well, most certainly. Um, the, the good news is that you can see that there is an appetite for faith-based film. Yes, it's, it's been there, to be honest with you. It just wasn't yeah. proven. Right. Yeah. Now we we prove it that there is a need for faith based films. The yes. other good news is that it's gotten better. Amen. You know, it it's gotten better. We still have a long way to go in general. Uh, we still have a long way to go. But it's gotten so much better. What I'd like to see different is movies that are outside the box. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, what we see a lot is drama. I'd love to see more comedy. Yes. Christian movies. I'd yes. like to see action Christian movies. I'd like yes. to see a thriller Christian movie. Absolutely. I'd love to 100%. see us expend more indeed I love that. indeed can i can i ask you this and I'm, of course i'm i'm sure you, you you may not know the answer to this but just for conversation's sake why why do you think that filmmakers christian filmmakers are reluctant to go into those areas like action and and, and comedy and so forth 
thrillers. It's, it's risky. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's risky. Uh, that is because what we've been feeding people for the last 50 years is mostly yeah. drama. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. to go outside of that box, because we've seen what has been successful in the theaters or in the streaming platform, it's mostly drama, right? Yes. That kind of film is successful. That's successful. It's all drama. Why would I want to like take a risk and do a comedy or, I mean, there have been comedies. I just feel like there, there aren't nearly enough of comedies, uh, not nearly enough. The good news is we have some comedies at ICFF this year. So that was exciting to see. Um, but I'd love to see action um, uh, movies. I'm, I'm writing one. Okay. And uh, I, I hope to, to screen that or to shoot that within the, within the next year. So it's a real action. <laughs> well, I, real you know, I, dude, I can't wait. I, I cannot wait. I'm going to be praying for you on that because I really believe that it can be done. I, 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 I 100% believe it can be done. It's just a matter of going into the, the avenue with, the, the faith that the Holy Ghost will show you how to do that because there's a way to do it. And I think a lot of people mm -hmm. think that, you know, there have to, there have to be expletives dropped. There has to be sex scenes <laughs> included and all those different things that Hollywood loves to do. And it, you don't have to do that. It's like, we are adults. We get it. There are certain things that we understand without you showing that. So right. I, I, I'm going to be in prayer with you on that. Uh, there's a movie out there. Uh, right behind me called Love Different, by the way, that I was a part of in 2016. That's a comedy directed yes. by Anthony Hackett. And it's yes. very funny. Uh, it has a serious theme, but the film is 85% comedy. Uh, and it deals with subject matter like racial differences. And and, and you know, it's hilarious. Uh, and, and Anthony Hackett did a great job of piecing that together. I'm a stand-up comedian and I'm the villain. So I guess they're trying to tell me something about my comedy. Anyway, <laughs> Marty, that, <laughs> that is a very good film. And it can be seen on Amazon Prime. But excuse me, I had to plug that. Because it's a good comedy. You mentioned that. But we need to see far more of it. Yes. And, and, you know, the action films, like you said, the thrillers. I mean, come on, Christian filmmakers. Let's get after let's it, it. you know, it. and let's trust the Holy Ghost to make this thing happen because he will do that if you have faith. I wanted to um, also ask you about we were talking about this before we came on live in regards to a film out there by Mark Wahlberg called Father Stew. And Father Stew was nominated at a few Christian film festivals, believe it or not. It's rated R. Uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg is Mark Wahlberg. Mel Gibson is Mel Gibson. Al although Mel Gibson did produce The Passion of the Christ, which in my opinion is arguably the greatest Christian film we've ever seen about Christ. But that being said, your opinion of Father Stu, if you've seen it, and will it be nominated at ICFF? Um, I have not gotten a chance to see uh, Father Stu yet, uh, okay. but I will. Okay. Uh, um, but no, it could never be nominated yeah. the way it is um, only because of the language yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. is used. For us, uh, you know, we have all sorts of people that attend, even children, uh, so we, we we would never have a rated R movie, even if it didn't have language. If it was like extreme violence, uh, yeah, we, we yeah, yeah, have we couldn't play Passion of the Christ either because it's rated R in the extreme violence. Right, right. Uh, and I just thought I'd throw it out. I I I I've heard that Father Stu was given some consideration at a few, believe, and believe me, a few <laughs> Christian film festival is not like, you know, a massive deal, but I just wanted to throw it out. I've seen it. It is a very good film and it go, it's a true story. Uh, the way they chose to do it was the way they chose to do it. They showed the reality of what happened and uh, it is what it is. Great. I, I think it's 
tremendous film, quite frankly and honestly. But again, it is rated R and it's got some stuff in there that may not be appropriate or suitable <laughs> for an ICFF. I just thought I would throw it out and see what you're, if you had actually seen it yet and it, if it had any kind of presence at ICFF. And I'm not surprised here that it doesn't. Just wanted to get your <laughs> feedback on that. Um, we were talking about Denzel Washington earlier. Denzel Washington has been indeed a part of some films that are not faith-based. They're not Christian, um, but they are 100. <laughs> I mean, Denzel Washington, he, he brings it 100, dude. And there's a positive re redeeming value in all of the films. He's making a great point. Uh, but in regards to, to Denzel, you mentioned also that he's a director. I forgot that he's also dabbled in that. Mm -hmm. Can you? one day perhaps seeing Denzel starring in a true faith-based film one day. Absolutely. 100%. I, I feel like we will. Okay. Um, I, I really feel like he will do one or more. Okay. Um, definitely. I, th I think, I think it's time. And I think part of it too is someone like Denzel, you know, Christian filmmaking has not reached that level yet for him to yeah. be right. Right. you know what i mean uh yeah. in, involved in that i think that we're 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 there you know and i mean you're talking about someone that's got to pay him 20 25 million dollars uh yes just just for him so it's hard to get those kind of dollars <laughs> in the christian yeah you know, yeah. Community. yeah it is, it is. And, I, and 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 i think that's the biggest hurdle that faith-based films are are facing right now to get you know out there in front of you know secular audiences because the budgets are are so low compared to Hollywood. Right. Uh, they're great stories, they're great scripts out there, but the 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 budgeting needs to get better. And if you want to get a person like then and there are other terrific actors in Hollywood that could do a faith-based film, right. and 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 do quite well at it, but you can't. You can't really hire them. You've got a guy like we were talking about Alec Baldwin earlier with I was talking with James Sang Lee on my show earlier today about Alec Baldwin. His brother, Stephen, uh, could very well be in Hollywood and he's chose to go, you know, full out uh, faith based. And I would imagine Stephen is not cheap, <laughs> but, you know, you have to be able to come up with the dollars. Do you see an improvement on the horizon, and I mean a dramatic improvement on the horizon for Christian filmmaking. Oh, most certainly, most definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, we've had. I mean, look at Jesus Revolution as an example. Yes, like, yes, it exceeded expectation. It did. You no, know? and they didn't spend two hundred million dollars in it. You know, um, yeah. they had some great actors. They had Kelsey Grammer uh, in it. Um, uh, the dude from Chosen. They have fantastic actors, and it did very, very well in the theaters. Um, and I think we're we're there. Uh, we just need to have bigger support. Like we need us as Christians. We also need to go out and support these projects so that they could create more <laughs> of these projects yes. right and so if we don't support it they won't be able to do more no they 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 won't and it, it would be nice if you, you 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 mentioned the fact that denzel washington probably commands 20 to 25 million dollars uh, to be a part of a film and i i would i would i would think and believe if someone came up with a script that was strong enough and the funds that were good enough to put on screen. No, not on a blockbuster level like Hollywood, but a good enough screen that could attract a Denzel Washington. He would probably do it for, you know, at a, at a cut rate just because he respects the script and the message. Uh, Cause he's a God man. I've, I've seen him do yeah. interviews and, and Denzel Washington, dude, he's a God man. He's got this motivation to do truth on a level that we can't identify with like, Oh, Oh my word. <laughs> hey Marty. Oh my word. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't do it. 
but he can, and he does yeah. it very, very well. So we just have to be in prayer about that. Yeah. Ladies and, and I think, yeah. I think it will happen. I think that's, what's going to yeah. happen. There's going to be a project that lands on his desk. Yeah. And he's going to be in love with the project, right? Yeah. So he's probably going to be a producer on the project um, and, and really, really put everything in uh, and it's going to be amazing and successful. And yes. it's going to draw even more people to Christian films. Praise God. I believe that. I absolutely believe that. And uh, as, as, as I say that, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Marty Jean Louis, uh, the founder of the International Christian Film Festival that's going to be held in Orlando, Florida. Uh, and I, Marty, my gosh, we're like, what, five, six weeks away uh, from the event. Time is flying right by. Uh, down in Orlando, Florida. So uh, be, be sure to get your tickets for that. Uh, before we get out of here, Marty, I want to ask you, um, what, what kind of advice can you leave with young filmmakers out there, particularly African-American filmmakers that are young and desirous of diving into this industry as a career? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and I'm going to use um nike slogan okay just, just do it <laughs> just do it. <laughs> honestly yes do, do it and it will suck that's okay <laughs> it's okay that's it's okay that's okay it is absolutely okay you're gonna learn from it yep the next one is gonna be slightly better because you've learned from the first one absolutely and you keep going and you ask people and you join seminars and you keep learning don't assume that you know everything because you've watched a few youtube videos you know yes. um come to places like icff or other or other festivals where you can learn and connect with others that can mentor you i think that's really really important because we all have to keep growing even the veterans they are learning all the time. Yes, 100%. Even the veterans are, we're always learning. I mean, at the top of our crap, still learning. There's no doubt about that. How, how can fans follow you, Marty, on uh, social media or by website? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Really? laughs> okay. I understand. Um, I do not currently <laughs> have any social media so they can't follow i do have linkedin so you can find me on linkedin, so just find look up LinkedIn. Marty. okay and so and bottom line anonymity anonymity is the word for marty g louis i look i told you that, dude. i mean with the stuff we're dealing with in our society right now and you got all these people that you know are cre kind of creepy and they're, they're following you for no good reason no godly reason <laughs> And, you know, you, you want to keep people out of your life. There's no doubt about it. You look at what's happening right now with, with TikTok. I mean, they're in front of Congress right now trying to defend their, their lives, their social media lives, because there's so much controversy surrounding this type of stuff. So I, I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with uh, producer, director, and founder of the International Christian Film Festival, Marty Jean Louis. And if you've enjoyed our conversation, well, by gosh, like it and share it and subscribe to the Maurice Brown comedy channel as well. You can't as well as any social media engine that Marty's a part of because he's not because he's not. But maybe LinkedIn. If you find him on LinkedIn, you know, go ahead and follow him. Um, and also you can uh, see the replay. If you came in late and you're like, oh, my gosh, I missed it. Hey, it's OK. You can watch the replay on Facebook or YouTube or the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV. And we're also on Spotify, where all major podcasts are heard. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible, you name it, we're there. Uh, program reminder, want to let you know next week, we're going to have Brian Cates on, uh, who is the uh, director for uh, Family Camp, as well as he's an award-winning filmmaker. So uh, come by uh, for that next Wednesday at, 3 p.m. And then at 5 p.m., we're going to have Cameron Arnett and his wife, BJ, on the show. Uh, and we're going to and they're they're both going to be speakers at ICFF and they're going to be on our show 
uh, next week. So uh, that's going to be exciting. Can't wait for those conversations. Uh, this has been a great show. And I, Marty, I want to thank you once again for being on. Uh, can't wait for the festival, which is only a few weeks away. And I, I want to say to you, my good friend, may the peace of Christ continue to be with you and your family. God bless you. And to you, God bless you. Thank you.